So either Brian's clairvoyant, or he looked at my news rundown, or both, the old veteran that he is, as we look on at Governor DeSantis, Florida's new leaders in the House and Senate say they support changing state law, as you look at the new Senate president and House leader, that could help the governor run for president in 2024. Under current law, the governor would have to resign if he was tapped for the GOP nomination. But the House Speaker and Senate president backing a policy change. He thinks it's a, quote, good idea to allow the governor to keep his post should he fail in that prospective bid for the White House. If an individual who is from Florida, who is a Florida governor, is running for president, I think he should be allowed to do it. I really do. I mean, that's a, an honor uh, and a privilege. And now for our roundtable with Brian Crowley. Uh, Brian, you're, you're not exactly uh, stricken with surprise by, by that no, effort. No, no, no. And I wonder if she felt the same way if Ron DeSantis happened to be a Democrat. But uh, you know. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking that very thing. Uh, you know, no I'll, change to the rules. I'll, I'll yeah. note for the historical record that we've had three former governors run for yeah. president, uh, Reuben Askew, Bob Graham, Bob Graham. And Jeb Bush. So I'm sure Ron DeSantis is the only sitting governor to run. I'm sure he's hoping to change that Florida track record yeah. uh, for running for president. We can't claim Donald Trump because he was a New Yorker That's right. Then. He's a Floridian now. Now he's a Floridian. So his rerun would be, I guess technically he was a Floridian for 2020. So maybe that... But uh, yeah. anyway, <laughs> it does show Republicans, though, really lining up. We talked uh, in the previous segment, you know, legislatively uh, in, in every way, shape and form. Florida, the third biggest battleground state in the union. Everybody looks to Florida uh, as, as you begin to look ahead to 2023, 2024. You have a governor saying, chill out. You know, I just won an election, not ready to announce anything. But kind of look ahead for and with us, Brian, as we start looking ahead for the governor. And then you cannot ignore uh, the man at Mar-a-Lago who's already announced uh, he's running in 2024. Kind of give us the big picture view. Well, I, I think the other thing that's happening is that, you know, the Justice Department is getting more aggressive with Donald Trump. There was an announcement on Friday that they were going to seek to bring in Mike Pence to talk to the former vice president about some of the January 6th accusations. Mm -hmm. uh, special counsel now looking at issues. You know, special issues. counsel looking at the issues. We've got a whole host of other investigations that are going on in New York and Georgia. Uh, now we have his tax records going to the House Ways and, Ways and Means Committee. U.S. Supreme Court essentially cleared the way for that. You know, um, you know, there's just so much that's always swirling around Donald Trump. I think some Republicans have become exhausted with it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I, you know, there are a lot of folks out there who question whether or not he's going to be as as strong as he was in t uh, 2016. You know, he, but the flip side of that is Ron DeSantis hasn't had that kind of test. Mm -hmm. Having somebody that's, that. you know, he's already called him uh, Ron De Sanctimonious, right. which for Donald Trump is pretty mild. And uh, mm -hmm. so if he really decides to hammer him, and he's threatened it, he said, I know things about uh, Ron DeSantis that I'll tell everybody. Which the governor ignored. Ignored, and probably rightfully so. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, anybody running against Donald Trump has to be ready to be hammered in very often personal and hurtful ways, frankly. And he's not shy about going after your family either. On the assumption, uh, which I think is a good one, that Governor DeSantis, somebody said, if he's not going to run now, when? He's at the zenith of popularity uh, with a former president who, who's showing, uh, his critics argue anyway, chinks in his armor, though others argue uh, until he's not, he's still on top of the mountain uh, with Republicans. But... Uh, setting that aside for just a moment, looking at Ron DeSantis himself, um, what, are the, what are the high points and what are the things ad adapting and adjusting to the, the rigors of a national campaign? Where you get out of uh, your comfort zone in Florida, where you're dealing with people in blue states and red states with the national media that can be extraordinarily tough. Kind of talk about that as you would imagine a potential DeSantis candidacy. He's already playing very well with the Republican mm. base, uh, but that's only part of it. Well, he has a supportive group that's already running ads in Iowa. Sure. You know, I've spent a lot of time in Iowa and yeah, uh, New packed. Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things I know about those regions is you have to do more than be on Fox. You have to be in living rooms. You have to be talking to people. And what you consistently hear about Ron DeSantis is that's not his comfort zone. Mm -hmm. uh, he really isn't a mingler. He really isn't a glad hander. Um, 
and maybe he'll get better at it. Uh, when Jeb Bush first ran for governor, mm -hmm. he was awful when he walked yeah. into a room. You know, he'd stand off in the corner until and somebody so dragged him into the middle it, of the crowd. I, I you know? never covered him. So wonky, you're like, uh, okay. <laughs> so, you know, if you're but he knew his policy. Uh, but if you're ambitious enough, you improve. You meet the need, and uh, uh, you know, the question is going to be, you know, I. I it, it, does he stay hardcore or does he find himself moving a little bit more toward the Republican middle in order to win over the entire Republican Party? Because if he's just competing on the hard edge, then he's more directly repeating, competing with Donald Trump. And those are Donald Trump's people and taking them away may not be as easy. And of course, uh, speaking about the governor, but you know, we've heard everything from uh, Chris Christie to, uh, to uh, uh, Governor Sununu, on and on and on. Nikki Haley, the yeah, list, okay. uh, Mike Pompeo, the list yeah. goes on and on. So it's, it, it could well be a crowded field, which by the way, many argue could ultimately be potentially a repeat of 2016, where they pick sure. each other off and who's left standing, uh, the former president. So we're a long way to seeing who's gonna announce, when they're gonna announce and what it'll mean. But your bottom line take is you do expect that, that showdown eventually that will include Governor DeSantis yeah. and the former president. Oh, absolutely. I, I have no doubt he's going to get into the race. Let's talk about pocketbook issues. And you've been talking about this for a while. In fact, be, uh, all, last, uh, all this past year, you, I can't remember how many times you brought up on this broadcast, they need to start focusing more and more and more on the homeowner's insurance crisis. Huge pocketbook issue. We talk so much about affordable housing about the homeowners insurance crisis and yet are spinning our wheels. Yet another special session coming up in December to try and see what they can do to help ease the pocketbook pain. Your thoughts? You know, in a relatively brief special session, it's only a few days, um, I don't think they're going to accomplish a lot. Mm -hmm. I think they'll nip away at the edges, but I think they have even acknowledged that they can't come up with a fix that's going to lower insurance premiums tomorrow mm -hmm. or even six months from now. Yeah. And uh, you know, part of the problem the insurance industry in Florida has is reinsurance. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any control over reinsurance. And another issue too, and, and Republicans in particular like to ignore it, is climate change. Whether you, you know, whether you believe climate change is causing the flooding in Delray, mm -hmm. or and in Miami and other areas mm -hmm. of the state, or causing uh, uh, really fierce hurricanes like Ian, Insurance companies don't care what you believe in. They look at the odds of them having to pay out. Right, right. And if they think that the, that the climate is changing enough where they're gonna to have to pay more in the future, they're either gonna abandon you or raise premiums even more. So, you know, doing things that reinforce the beaches, that reinforce homes that are being built, that th make things more hurricane proof is essential as we go forward in Florida. And it would be interesting to see if the legislature would look really hard at those issues. Uh, and, and, and kind of come off the dime because the hue and cry, I've often said to you at a point, uh, the, the combined voices of Floridians saying enough already. And you're certainly hearing that and yet we're still kind of in the same place. So that's one of the big topics we will look at in 2023 and beyond. And many argue that it wasn't a priority. They had a special session, which oftentimes says, well, we didn't bother with it in the regular session. We understand people are upset, so let's have a special session. And now we're gonna try it again. So well, the you've gotta think the pressure just keeps growing and growing and growing and maybe breaks the log jam, but that may be and Pollyanna thing. And that's exactly what it has to be, the voter pressure. Mm -hmm. If you leave it up to the lobbyists in Tallahassee, the voters, voters never win. It has to be an issue so intense that the voters raise hell. We'll come back in just a moment with your closing thoughts. Back